What is going on, YouTube fitness family? We are here in what looks like a bunker, but we are here in Las Vegas, Nevada, in the best spot we could find to film in our Airbnb. The lighting is absolute garbage inside, so we are outside. This is not a ransom video. Do not worry, I'm safe, guys. I am just predicting for you guys the classic physique, Olympia. I'm so excited to be here to watch it. Um, it's been fun to see some of the guys in the gym looking absolutely nutty. We have the first surprise of this list. Niall Darwin, one punch Yaz. So he is actually coached by my coach, Calum Reistrick, who I think is one of the best coaches in the world right now. Um, and this guy looks absolutely insane. Probably one of the smallest waists in classic physique, crazy big legs. I think the only thing that might be holding him back in, in terms of like not placing higher, which he potentially could, is just the development in the upper body. His back is crazy, but just through the chest and arms and shoulders, I think that's the, where he's gonna be potentially a little bit outshined by some of these guys who are a little more dense, especially in the upper body. I mean, especially standing next to somebody like Wesley, for example, who's like, just insanely huge and takes up so much space. I think that's where he'll get a little exposed. But in terms of like classic lines, it doesn't really get much more classic than Niall. Go check out, like, just look at these videos, man. This guy is absolutely insane. He's peaked perfectly for the show. I've seen it. He is absolutely diced. I think he's gonna surprise a lot of people. He could place eighth but or higher. I think eighth is gonna be where he lands just because Rookie in the in the Olympia, they haven't really seen him on the Olympia stage. Plus, I haven't seen him next to some of these top guys, so it'll be really interesting to see how he stacks up. In seventh place, I have Michael Daboul. So this guy, the Golden Eagle, crazy conditioning. I think he's an amazing competitor. I don't think anybody outworks this guy. He really works in silence. He just busts his ass. He never misses. If like there was a show where he was saying like, oh, I was off. You look at the photos, the guy was like so peeled. I think he got second or third in that show. Um, so obviously he had, he had, he was onto something, but the fact that he kind of outshines, not maybe the best bodybuilding genetics when it comes to classic physique structure, like his waist isn't like the tiniest, but he makes it look small because he gets so lean. He's got such good posing. Um, he has been kind of called shaky in his posing when he hits that front double and that back double. Oh, it's just, I think it's a beautiful sight to behold. Uh, it pulls a great vacuum. Um, I think a tremendous physique. He's going to come up there and be absolutely out of his mind peeled. Um, so I think it could be seventh, but I think it could be as high as fourth, depending on, you know, what the judges are looking for. In sixth, I have Mike Summerfield, uh, amazing physique as well. A little bit on the smaller side, uh, just beautiful flow, crazy sweeping quads, uh, really, really amazing lines, very conditioned. He's uh, seen his updates. I think that he's one of those guys that the only thing that's holding him back is height. Classic, as we kind of have seen, has shifted towards favoring taller bodybuilders. I think the cap is just kind of unfair in the sense if you're 6'2", 6'3", 6'1", you get to be like 240, 250. It's, it's a lot of weight and a lot of muscle you can carry on stage. So if you're Mike and your cap is, let's say 200, 210, I don't know exactly where his cap is. It's very hard to, first of all, make the weight, it's a very, very arduous task. And then to fill out enough and perfect the look, you gotta be really, really spot on. So I think the fact twofold, one, being a smaller guy, he's gotta really take up a lot of space on stage um, and to compete with some of these taller guys and it's gotta nail the peak. And I think if you really have to work hard to get to your weight cap, it's harder to really nail that final look. So for those reasons, I have him in sixth. In fifth, I have Breon Ainsley. Um, I think this one's a tough one just because obviously he's an ex-champ. I think he's been kind of sitting in this third, fourth, fifth, sixth spot for the last few years now. And I think it's just a testament to what they're looking for. But in terms of detail, Breon is literally one of the most detailed classic physique competitors in in the last, you know, since the uh, classic physique started, the details in the back, the density, the 3D look, um, I think that literally the only thing that holds him back is really structure, waist structure, kind of looks a little bit more like a bodybuilder 212 guy. He's very dense and then the legs, they don't sweep out as much. It's not a matter of 
lacking muscle. I think it's just genetically, he doesn't sweep out as much. So standing next to somebody like Urs, his legs don't look as impressive, even if they have, let's say pound for pound as much muscle. And that's what it is, guys. You guys have to understand bodybuilding is all about illusion. So if your quads insert lower, they sweep harder. Like Niall, who I was talking about earlier in the list, crazy sweeps. You could have less muscle and actually look way bigger than the person next to you. So don't get discouraged, especially if you're starting on a bodybuilding, you get on a bodybuilding stage and you don't necessarily place where you want to. It might not be that the fact that you got out muscled, it might not be that you got out of condition, it might just be a structural thing. And that's why I say like, run your own race, you versus you, get better every single year. If comp competing is fun for you, then do it. But if it's not serving you, you're trying to force a you know, square, square peg in a round hole, I would say just focus on yourself, focus on bodybuilding for yourself and not for judges or for anybody else's opinion. Um, number four brings me to the next person I just mentioned, the miracle bearer, Urs Kalasinski, just gets absolutely diced. Um, another guy that unfortunately just based on the cap, he really can't make too much progress year over year. I think he's a guy that's going to end up in open in the next year or two, just because I don't, I haven't seen that much progress from him over the last, let's say two years. And it's just not, it's not his fault. He builds a ton of muscle, but he's got to rip it off in order to make the weight cap. And that's just the unfortunate reality of the situation when it comes to classic physique. If you build a ton of muscle, it doesn't really matter if you have to make the weight cap again, you're probably going to have to go catabolic to get it off or just lose so much water weight that it's hard to fill up for the show. So then you kind of look a little bit flat, even with that new tissue that you earn. So I think, I personally think Urs should go to open. I think he's got the structure for it. I think he'd do great. I think it'd take him a good amount of time, probably two years until he has a competitive pro level of muscularity, but he's shown that he can put on muscle very, very rapidly. And that's why I think it could be a good option for him. If he was a guy that's like, Oh, I can barely eat. I can't really put on muscle. Like he's the opposite. He'll get up to like 275 in the off season and be like 10% body fat. So what that tells me is he probably pretty easily get up to like 290, 295 at the same body fat percentage. And then cut down to like 245 on stage and look absolutely insane. So um, that's my recommendation, but he's going to be fourth this year, I think. Um, number three, we are going to have Wesley Vissers. And I know a lot of you guys are thinking he's the heir apparent. He won the Arnold Classic. He's on fire right now. He's very confident. I think he's like Arnold reincarnate. Uh, I just think that when it comes to a classic physique, what they're looking for, I've noticed, is just the structure, just the flow, the really small waist. And even though Wesley will be extremely conditioned, he's tall, he's huge, he's got a ton of muscle, he lacks a little bit in the leg department. And I don't think it was from a muscularity perspective, it's because his quads insert very high like mine and they don't sweep out uh, as far as let's say Ramones or Chris's. And for that reason, he looks like he's a little slighter in the lower body. Um, and I think Ramon just flows better for those reasons. And that, that's why I have him in second. I think Ramon is on a fucking mission. I think he's pissed that he lost to Arnold. I think he got a little complacent. I think he really put himself in that mindset that I'm number two now. I'm the next classic physique champ after Chris. He also seems that he's accepted the fact that Chris is kind of the goat and it's going to be very hard for him to defeat Chris as it stands because the weight cap doesn't allow Ramon to really progress a ton. Uh, but I think he's going to come in based on what I'm seeing absolutely peeled out of his mind. Probably one of those, if I had to pick one physique, to trade places with just to walk around Ramon, even over Chris, I'd pick that physique. It's just, just nutty structure, crazy ab development, insane legs, just so aesthetic. I couldn't be more of a fan of the guy. So I'm going to have him in second, but nobody's being Chris. Let's just be honest. If anybody has like Wesley beating Chris, they're on crack. It's not going to happen. Chris is going to smoke everybody. Like he's, it's so dangerous. Chris has been winning with injuries, with hardship. He literally said like, this is the best prep ever. You have a Chris Bumstead with no hardship. Like, good luck, get out of the fucking way. It's over, lights out. He's gonna walk out. It's gonna be one of those moments where they have the flashing lights and he walks out on stage and he's just, and everybody's just like, mouth just drops and they're just like, it's over. Um, kind of like last year. So uh, it's gonna be more of the same. Chris is gonna win number six. I don't think he's gonna retire. I think he's got more in him. I think he's going to say that 
you know, talked with his wife and he's ready to, you know, go for a couple more or at least one more. Uh, I don't think the retirement speech is coming this year. I don't think he's ready. If this prep was terrible and it was hard for him to be a dad and get through it, I think he would hang it up, but it seems quite the opposite. It seems like having more meaning to his life, more structure actually helped him. And so I think he's gonna continue to win for the next couple of years. And Wesley and Ramon and whoever wants to try to take it from him is gonna have to wait because it, it's gonna be until he's done that, he decides to be done that he is not gonna win anymore. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you guys like bodybuilding content or any type thing related to bodybuilding in general. Um, I know this channel has been shifted more towards general fitness, building muscle in the gym and not as much bodybuilding specific. But if you guys like this type of video or analysis, let me know. I definitely would love to pop on and do this for like Arnold Classic or some of the bigger shows. I'm not gonna turn this into a bodybuilding news channel, but let me know what you guys think. As always, love you guys, appreciate you guys, and we'll see you on the next video.